Hey everyone, have you ever tried to learn how to code but got stuck? In my new Private Fan programming class, we're going to break that loop. This course is primarily focused on people who are complete beginners, so don't worry if you don't have any background. This course is different than other courses because we're going to teach you to think like a programmer and solve problems like a robot. So let's get started. Hi everyone. Uh, so in the last video, we talked about how we can make our function using the things that we already know. So we know how to make functions, we know about variables, and we know about if and then statements. That's what we learned in the last lesson, the very first lesson with all the quadratic formula stuff. Now, we were able to use that information to do our very simple encrypt letter function that will take in a letter and spit out what it is in the cipher. So actually, we're a lot of the way there. What the, this video and the next video is going to talk about is how we can turn uh, this one function for a single letter into a function for all the letters in this message. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about iterating over this message. So characters uh, are single letters or single particular letters or, or a space or punctuation in Python. And a bunch of characters together like this is called a string. Now we've just been referring to strings as though they're text. But text is actually viewed in a similar way to lists are as being a collection of individual characters that are in a particular order. So if you remember, when we talked about lists, we talked about iterating over lists using a for loop. For instance, for i in one, two, three, print i squared. So what this is going to do is for every value in this list, in this case, one, two, and three, it's going to print out what happens if I take that value and square it. So one, four, and nine. Actually, in Python, strings work in a similar way to lists. And instead of iterating the values in the list, we'll go over each character in the string. For instance, if I wanted to print out on a single line each character in a string, I could say for character in message, or actually, let me just do in this is a message, I can print character. And what it's going to do is it's going to take every character, just like if it was a list, it's going to go through every character and perform some action on that character. Now, we haven't talked a whole bunch about things that you can do with strings or characters, but there's actually quite a bit that you can do with strings. And there's a couple of methods that are particular to strings that are going to be very useful for us. To just take a step back and talk about some of the operations you can do to strings, we're going to illustrate this with an example, right? If I go through this message right now and I try to use this encrypt letter function, something's going to happen that isn't going to be exactly like we planned. So that's what we want to do, right? We want to say for character in message, uh, encrypt letter character. So we want to go through each character in that message and then we want to use this function that we made to encrypt it, to translate it into this kind of gibberish looking language. But if we run this line, uh, we, okay, for, so first of all, we have to print it. This is important because it won't print it out if you don't hit anything. But here, uh, we only get one letter and that's the very first letter of that message. So do you have any idea why that might happen? If you think a little bit about why that might happen, the reason is because our function takes in a capital letter, right? So it, it's not going to work for, for lowercase letters. And all of these are pretty much lowercase letters. So this can bring you into an idea of, okay, there might be some operations I might want to perform on strings. And there are quite a few of them. So actually to get this to work, we need to change, translate these all into uppercase strings. And the way that we can do that, there's actually a simple way to do that in Python. It's using upper. The way that we do that with a, a string method is we do dot upper on that string. And here you can see now everything got translated. So this is actually what we were aiming for. Now I'm going to take a bit of a step back and talk a little bit more about string methods. So I'm going to say this is a string and set it up to example. And that's our variable example. Now, if we look at example, we're going to just print out our string. Now we can do particular things with string with strings. First thing that might be a little bit counterintuitive. So we can actually multiply strings by a number. And what this will do is we'll repeat it a certain number of times. So if I print example times three, example was a string and it just puts them together. This is a string. This is a string. This is a string. 
This is known as concatenation, which means adding strings together. And you just bloop, you paste them in, you bump them into each other, and they're pasted together now. That's how concatenation works. A couple of other things that you can do with strings are some of these string methods that I had mentioned before. So some of the simplest ones uh, are, are upper, which changes everything into an uppercase string. Uh, and that's what we used up here. So we took our message, which looks like this normally with a bunch of lowercase letters, and we said dot upper and turned everything into uppercase. Now you might imagine there's quite a few other types of things you can do as well. So you can do uh, lower casing, so you can do lower, it will make everything lowercase. You can do capitalize, which will capitalize the string, make just the first letter uppercase, which is quite neat. And then you could also do title, which will make it like a title. It will capitalize every letter in the string, separated by spaces. So that's the idea behind these these types of string methods, and they can be quite powerful. Now, an additional string method you could do is addition. So if you add to a string, this is some thing else, it will concatenate those two strings together, which might be a little bit counterintuitive to what to what you might be used to. You might what you might have thought. So you might think that addition will only work with numbers, right? Three plus two, but you can actually also use them with strings. And this is an example of some of the things you can do with strings. Now there's a lot of other things you can do with strings out there, but for right now, this is all we really need to know about string manipulation in Python. As I mentioned up here, we were now able to use this upper method for strings to be able to encrypt every letter of this. For instance, H goes to E, I goes to F. And if you remember when we first started this, we actually had this similar thing here. So this is on the right track, right? We were able to encrypt this message. But there's one character on every line, and this is hard to read and doesn't really necessarily make this usable for us. So the next video, we're going to talk a little bit about how we can use some of the string manipulation we just learned to get this all into one neat string as a variable that we can then use later on if we want to as well.